We've talked about the littles. Yes. And I guess they're still little, but we're going to be talking about when kids start school, like kindergarten, first grade age. I sure remember how different they looked even between Mm -hmm. pre-K and kindergarten that suddenly my toddler, you know, was a little girl uh, and other Mm -hmm. kids' toddlers were little girls or little boys. Once they got to kindergarten, they had lost some of that baby fat and they were running around and had ideas and plans. Yes, they they look more like children, less like toddlers, but um, it's my experience they believe themselves to be fully capable (laughs) Um, almost adults when they start real school lots of lots of bragging at this phase sometimes I'm the best at this or that they'll come home and say they're the best at running or they're the best at Mm -hmm. this and that and um, that's that's normal that's not Mm -hmm. a sign that they're going to be full (laughs) of themselves later it's not a character it's just a it's just a normal thing for them Um, and Absolutely. they're testing and, and wanting so much independence at this age. Mm-hmm. They want to learn how to do things and do things themselves or by mm-hmm. themselves. And um, it's it it takes some patience. But it does. It's also an opportunity to teach them to do so many things because they're actually interested in learning. Yes. And and I think sometimes it, it teaches them. One skill they're developing now is to learn that it, you do actually have to learn. Mm-hmm. You don't announce that you can do something and you can automatically do it. Right. Because they know there's things they've they've learned how to do, but they don't really remember learning them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they'll announce they're going to be the best at this or that, and really they they need a lot more practice. If so only, <laughs> If only it were that easy. That's right. It would be great. But, yeah, we um, – I know um, – at my house, it's a time when um, they get really interested in helping me with things. Yes. Which I think is great. And, mm-hmm. and they're learning to do things. Um, there's a lot of patience there. In lots of affirmation. Them, lots of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Lots of we can try again. It's fine. So, mm-hmm. um, But I think it's great to, to take that time and teach them and see mm-hmm. the skills mm-hmm. develop for them. I think so, and I think phrases I, I remember that were good is, aren't you brave to try to do that? Mm-hmm. That was very brave, or um, uh, I love how that you're trying something new. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely, and so, and then I think like for their their uh, their faith development, we're still, it's still really important to read those Bible stories every mm-hmm. night, and they might get tired of the same old Bible book that they had when they were younger, buy a different one with a little different, uh, a little more complex or different pictures and that kind of thing. Um, but they do want to feel like a big kid. So the the uh, Bible story book, like the hard book, or what are those called? The board books. The board books. That's yep. what I was looking for. They're, they may not, they may feel like that's a little beneath them. And so you can even kind of present it to them that now that you're a big kid, this is more of a big kid Bible, and little kids don't read this Bible, and it's still not a regular translation. It's still a kid's Bible. And they'll maybe. be pretty proud of themselves, too, I think, when you're talking about the stories with them, um, asking them questions, and they can mm-hmm. tell you back some of the stories that you've been reading or they've been learning. That's really going to boost their confidence, too, that they know those. Yes, yes, I think that's so. great. And they're going to repeat what you say, Mm-hmm. And they're going to sing with the radio. Mm-hmm. And parents don't always know that because <laughs> if, you know, uh, if, uh, if we've had an issue with a certain relative and we talk about that in front of them, they're going to repeat mm-hmm. what you say. <laughs> and depending on what kind of music you listen to on the radio, you may be really unhappy to hear your kids singing things sometimes. Yep. This is a good time for K-Love or The Fish or any of those other Christian radio stations uh, because they will sing. Mm-hmm. And that enforces their faith a lot because the truths of those songs last oh yeah for them and they will um around this age they get very quick to speak up during prayer requests yes um share personal things they (laughs) want to pray for everyone they're really concerned um they will share the all the information um so if it's something that that you've discussed with them that is not to be shared with everyone maybe mention that before Mm -hmm. 
some activities. Make sure they know. And of course, we're trained. We we know kind of how to handle those things and how to move a group past something mm-hmm. uh, that we sense as adults that maybe not everybody is supposed to know. Uh, so please don't feel like that's a that that's a problem on our end. But this is a great time for them to learn the difference between secret and private. Right. Um, you know certain things it's not that they're a secret that we're embarrassed about it's just there's some information that's private and it's not for everybody it's just for people in our family Mm -hmm. and that's also a great thing to talk to them about their bodies their bodies are not they don't have to be ashamed of their bodies but their bodies are private and not everybody gets to touch them and that's it kind of it's all the same issue if you really think about it and that that kind of helps with the safety issue too of teaching them um that people shouldn't ask you to keep secrets Yes. So if someone's asking you to keep secrets, then you should probably tell a trusted adult about that. Yes, uh, that's really important that nobody gets to tell you to keep mm-hmm. secrets from your parents or grand, you know, whoever your guardian is. Nobody right. can tell you to keep those secrets. Yeah, that's right. Even things that seem harmless, they shouldn't get to keep secrets from you. Um, yes. So I think about giving. Yes. And, and, uh, charity kind of work. I know parents always want their kids to be caring and compassionate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of things that kids can get involved in around this age that they um, will understand. Of course, they understand giving to anything, but I know whenever we have donated toys Mm -hmm. to a toy drive or we've donated to the backpack ministry and they've seen the food we bought or, you know, we're donating money so that this certain thing can happen the kids really latch onto that Mm -hmm. because they know what they're doing and why they're doing it. And you can kind of use that to, to roll into what we give at church. And this is what that does. Yes. And this is why we give at church. Um, And that may help them understand it more. Mm -hmm. And they want to be the one that puts the dollar in the offering plate, or Mm -hmm. they want to be able to say, I got soup for this or that Mm -hmm. charitable outreach or whatever. They, they want to get to do that. And, that feels very grown up to them, and yes. so that's that's good. Now, if you take them to shop for Christmas angels, it is still age appropriate for them to choose cool things for another kid and then to want them. Oh yeah. Um, and so you kind of have to say no. Remember all the things we have. This is, but that's developmentally mm-hmm. appropriate, too. Um, I love to see kids this age try a lot of things and have their parents not pigeonhole them mm-hmm. to be you know, the star quarterback or to be the best singer or musician. I think it's wonderful if you can find short-term opportunities for kids this age rather Mm -hmm. than having them commit to a long thing and a long activity. Um, And give them the freedom to um, be comfortable saying that they don't like it. Yes, yes. They're not committing for a lifetime. Right, (laughs) and just not to feel the pressure of well, my mom really, really wants me to do this, and I, I don't like it, but I want her to be happy. Like, mm-hmm. allow them to, to be comfortable saying that this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and I remember at this age, my kids really were not ready to have, you know, several activities a week. Mm-hmm. Once they got home from school, they, they were done. And it was hard for me as a parent because everybody else was signing their kids up for mm-hmm. lots of things. And I'm really glad that I waited until they were ready. Right. Because now they're in lots of things. But in kindergarten and first grade, they really weren't ready for most things. They they needed the downtime at home. Mm-hmm. They need so. a lot. They still need a lot of that time, um, even if they don't always want to admit it. They don't know when they're tired. No. No. <laughs> and, and their logic will give you perfectly reasonable explanations in their own minds why they're not tired. Mm-hmm. And their logic doesn't make a lot of sense to us sometimes. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So you think about all the things they have to learn to do in kindergarten and first grade. They oh, just gosh. need so much affirmation. Yes. Lots of affirmation. And, uh, yeah. They're learning a lot. And they're they're also, even if they've been in preschool, they're learning to have that different relationship with a teacher. Yes. Because um, up, up through preschool, in which even in elementary, the teacher is still are very loving towards the children. But Mm -hmm. I feel like there's more expectations when you start elementary school. Yes. Of the teachers and the students and everyone. So it's kind of a different dynamic that they're getting used to. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're getting to the age where they're, like, uh, choosing friends Mm -hmm. rather than everyone's friends. So they may also be learning to deal with um, 
being in class with a little bit of conflict sometimes. Yes, and maybe some people are mad at each other. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe somebody gets in trouble all the time. Right. Because the standards have started to change. Absolutely. So there's a lot going on in their world. There's a lot. There's a lot. And I think as a parent, sometimes a child is ahead in one thing or behind in something a little, and there's some catch-up time. And mm -hmm. that is not any reflection on their future most of the time. No. It doesn't mean anything. Um, it's it's uh, everybody, they develop at different stages and phases. And I think it's good for them to talk about why they like every subject mm -hmm. and not to focus on good grades or what makes me like a subject in school. Right. To try to even stay away from the idea that uh, you got a good grade in this, so you're good at this. Just what makes math fun? Right. What makes reading fun? You know, um, so, but they just they just need a lot of love and nurture, just like the littler kids at this mm -hmm. age. It's a fun time to expose them to new things, mm -hmm. see their reactions, gauge their interest. It's it is fun, but we have to, like you said, have to be careful not to overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yes. it can be a lot. That's right, and so we don't want parents to miss those funny, crazy things their kids say. And it might even be great to get a journal or even just dictate into the phone some mm -hmm. notes about the date and what funny thing your child said. And I remember writing down some of those things. Um, I reread some just not very long ago, and I'm so glad mm -hmm. I was able to write them down. But I could have just dictated them into my phone if I was in a hurry and had one note oh, yeah. for that. And But don't miss that. Yeah, they say some great things. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> oh, they do. So. But they're still they're still a little bit cuddly too. So they are. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm currently in my third or finishing my third and last year of kindergarten. So yes, very. Good. You're going to graduate this time, Kayla. Yes, that's I awesome. Am. <laughs> um, so it's been fun, but I'm trying to trying to slow down and enjoy the end of this because I know it's one of the good years. And Mac has changed a lot since I have come here two and a half, almost three years oh, ago. Oh yeah. He is so different. It's been it's been great to watch him come through these stages along with all mm -hmm. the other kids. Oh yeah. But next week, second and third. Yeah. So they're getting a little older and a little more capable. And that's right. All right. Well, we will talk about that then. If you have any questions or anything, any comments about like when your kids were this age, anything fun to share, feel free to leave those for us. I, I would love to read them. Be a lot of fun. All right. Have a good week. Bye.